This video is a response to the number file episode about Benford's Law. Now first off, I want to say that I love the number file series, totes interesting and so on, but I think the main explanation of Benford's Law, using raffle tickets, isn't quite right. So first, let's just remind ourselves of what Benford's Law is about. The idea is that when you take a set of numbers that span many orders of magnitude, like country populations, financial statements, or whatever, and look at how often the first digit of each of these numbers is a 1, or a 2, or a 3, or so on, you'll find that the digit 1 appears far more often than the 1 in 9 chance that you might expect. Here's an example I generated from the sizes of nearly 50,000 files on my computer. And here's the ex expected distribution given by Benford's law, and its formula. As you can see, it's a pretty good fit. So now for the raffle ticket explanation given in the number file video. The idea goes that if you hold a raffle with 100 numbers, the first digits will be evenly distributed amongst the nine possible digits. So the digit 1 will appear with a probability of about 11%. If you add the next 100 numbers up to 200, almost all of these start with a 1, so the digit 1 will appear with a probability of 56% overall. And as we move up to 1000, the probability gently falls back to 11% again. Moving up to 2,000 gives us 56% again, and at 10,000 we're back to 11%, and so on. Now the central claim of the number file video is that if you take the average of all of these probabilities, you get 30.1%, the percentage that Benford's law predicts. However, as observed by at least one commenter on the video, this just isn't true. You get 24.1%. This means that it doesn't explain Benford's law, it's just one example where multiplying different numbers together gives some increase in the occurrence of numbers staying with a digit 1. For me at least, a far more satisfying example is to think about the way the population of a single country increases over time. If the population of the country increases by the same percentage every year, it'll follow an exponential curve, which looks like this. As you can see, the curve gets steeper and steeper over time. And if we draw lines out from the y-axis, you can see that you spend much more time between 1 and 2 than you do in any other of the numbers. And in fact, if you work out what percentage of the total time is spent between 1 and 2, it works out to 30.1%, exactly as predicted by Benson's law. And if any given country spends 30.1% of its time with a population beginning with a digit 1, it stands to reason that if you look at the current populations of all the countries in the world, about 30.1% of them will begin with a digit 1 as well. So Benson's law can be easily derived if you assume that the numbers increase or decrease exponentially. I think this explanation is a lot better, because aside from the fact that it actually produces the correct probabilities, there seems to be something deeper about the correct observation that many processes, like populations and financial trends, increase and decrease along exponential curves. This is in contrast to the raffle example, where we seemingly have to accept that the population of a country is dictated by raffles. But those of you who are a bit more demanding might say that there are several instances where Benford's law is obeyed, where there doesn't seem to be any good reason why exponential trends might be involved. Like the sizes of files on my computer. Why would file changes size over time? And what about the fundamental physical constants of the universe? They don't change at all, let alone along exponential curves. So if you want to have a deeper understanding of where Benford's law comes from, you need the following statement, which is more powerful, but perhaps less intuitive. If you multiply many random numbers together, and repeat this calculation many times, the resulting numbers will span many orders of magnitude, and obey Benford's law. For example, if you roll 20 dice, and multiply all the values together, you'll get some number between 1 and 6 to the power of 20, which is more than 3 quadrillion, so that's quite a few orders of magnitude, and the probability of getting a number starting with 1 will be very close to 30.1%. The more dice you roll and multiply, the closer you'll get to 30.1%. Now to explain how this works in detail would take a whole video of its own. Today I'm going to do my own rushed explanation, but if you get lost, please watch this video which does a wonderful job of explaining it another way. It's by James Grimes, one of the guys on Numberphile, and it's also linked in the description below. So, my explanation. If we work on a log scale, multiplication of numbers becomes addition of their logs, because the log of x times y is just the log of x plus the log of y. This is how slide rules work. 
So if we work on a log scale, we're just adding numbers now, not multiplying them. Now, if you take two random distributions and add them together, what you're doing is convoluting the probability density functions of those distributions. Every time you convolute two distributions together, you get something that is wider and smoother than either of the distributions you started with. So after convoluting lots of them, you end up with a distribution that's very smoothly and thinly spread over a long distance on the log scale. So, back to our observations. Do these numbers span many orders of magnitude? Yes, they do. And what's the probability that these numbers start with a 1? Well, we need to see what the area of the curve is between 1 and 2, 10 and 20, 100 and 200, and so on. The width of each of these buckets on the log scale is a distance from log 2 to log 1. This distance is log 2 minus log 1. The probability of, an, of a number starting with a 2 is log 3 minus log 2, which is smaller. In fact, because the log function is the inverse of the exponential function, you end up with exactly the same probabilities as the exponential example. In fact, you can even see the magic 30.1% figure hiding in plain sight right here. So again, that was very brief. Um, yeah, have a look at James's video to get a much more carefully thought out presentation. But hopefully my explanation is interesting is a very different take on the same ideas. This concludes the main part of my video. I've probably tried to cover too much material at once here, so please do comment and ask questions in the comments below, because I'd love to help if something I've said is a bit confusing or a bit rushed, and I might even make another video if I get enough interest with some specific aspect of what I've said. For now, I'd like to preempt one comment that an astute observer might make about how averages can differ if biased sampling is used. In particular, when I took the average of the curve I showed before and got 24.1%, I was picking numbers on the x-axis so that every number from 1000 to 10,000 was equally likely to be picked. But when we draw this on the log scale, it looks wrong. It looks like I'm sampling the right-hand side of the curve where it's low disproportionately often, which might bias the average and make it lower. So what if instead I use randomly selected points along the x-axis of the graph? Now my sampling looks even, at least when drawn on a scale, and indeed now the average changes to 30.1%, as predicted by Benford's law. So my objection was wrong, right? I just biased the sample. Well, there's a bit more to it than that. If you take points randomly on a log scale, you're going to end up with a distribution that obeys Benford's law. Forget reading off values and taking the average, forget the y-axis entirely. If we just zoom in on the x-axis, you can see that 30.1% of the length of the scale is numbers that begin with 1. So I could replace the beautiful curve generated by the raffle example with a plain, simple square wave that's high if x begins with 1 and low otherwise. The average of that curve would be 30.1% as well. In fact, if you take an exponential distribution, or equivalently read numbers randomly off a log scale, you will have a distribution that obeys Benford's law. You can then go ahead and multiply by any fixed number, and Benford's law will still hold. You can multiply by any random number distribution, and Benford's law will still hold. In particular, you can multiply by a continuous uniform distribution between 0 and 1, which is equivalent to running a raffle, modular rounding, and Benford's law will still hold. So yes, Benford's law holds when you run raffles with the number of tickets drawn from an exponential distribution, but that's 100% because of the exponential distribution and 0% to do with the raffle. So just like the preponderance of numbers starting with 1 in the times table, I think that the raffle idea just serves as one of a million possible examples of how multiplication drives distributions towards Benford's law, rather than a good explanation of why this happens. Thanks for staying with me through this whole video, I know it's been quite long. Again, please do leave questions in the comments below, I always enjoy answering questions or having a bit of a debate. See you!